just the daily stress that I have to deal with, I didn't know that it was something that important and serious that I should pay attention to my health. So until last year, I was, this is me, a few months ago with like the shorter bangs and still the highlighter, if you can see. Um, the family photo picture of like the perfect one with my dad, such a good golfer, my mom and my younger sister, the fashionista, since very young. And I was 26, just old, still live with the parents. And I'm very close to finish my second qualifications, which is in Diploma Graphic Design, where I met Michelle, that she's mentioned before. And I was raised in a very conservative Vietnamese household. So thus, at the age of 26, quitting your full-time job and changing your career path and not getting married is not the best thing to do. <laughs> this is me, almost every time, like my couch. So I am much older than my peer at the college and constantly ask why why do I need to go back to school when I already have like some sort of like career? And then instead of like persuading a master degree overseas, do I do, why do I want to go to the field that actually like the lower degree when I already have a bachelor? And then um, what my plan after finishing school, am I married yet? If not, when? Like, and those questions really stressing me out because it's made me feel like I was going backward instead of moving forward. And on top, on top of that, being in relationship with a woman, it was really like a taboo that I never thought like, one day I can comfortably talk about this to my parents or anyone except for my very close friends. And um, the more that I'm close to the finish, the more that I feel like I really doubtful, like I don't know what to do, what my plan next, what do I want in life? I don't have any plans actually. And I feel like really insecure. So I set my goal moving out at 23, but then just a few months ago, I was nowhere near the life that I imagined that myself living in. It was really difficult for me. So uh, this might be you read it on time, very sarcastic on some e-car, because we live in a society now these days that we compare ourselves on a daily basis and what we, what we learn from social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram, it's just like people living in the perfectly clean home, going adventures, have a lot of achievement. And look at yourself, you feel like you are so small and you have nothing. And, um, but I mean, I don't think that's real. That, that's not true because we are showing the best self on the social media, but then actually in our real life, no one knows what happens in between us. So, and when the moment when my relationship hit the bottom rock, it was a deal breaker because I was feel like, I was very empty handed and I feel so exposed. Like I don't have a stable job, I don't, my family don't really understand me and my romance is just going nowhere. So it was hard time as well, right? <clears throat> so that's, when I start to experience a, like, a lot of different symptoms, like short of a breath, I couldn't really eat, I couldn't really sleep. So I went to sleep at like 2 or 3 a.m. every morning and I wake up at 5. And that was really scary because I was feeling exhausted all the time and I turned down my client. I didn't go to school. And then, I mean, like, I don't really care about what's happened out there anymore. And then, um, <clears throat> and then I just basically stay inside the house for men for a really long time. And my anxiety caused me being really furious. And it actually is a fight to my family as well because they don't know what's going on with me. And they feel hopeless because they can't help me. They don't know what, what was going on. So my mom cried a lot, I remember that, and she talked to my dad. But then still, they were just like, we don't understand, like, why do you have to be like that? And, um, and that's when I realized that how anxiety can really affect my life and, and it was kind of scary because I don't know how it's going to end and when it's going to end. Because one day I feel better about myself and the next day, or just maybe even the next hour, I feel like the whole world just crossing down. And it was really scary. But then I know that one thing, I want a life that I don't want to live that way. That I, want, I don't want to waste my time and my energies and I don't want to risk my career, it just begin as well. And I think I must ask him for help because once in a while, we are one human being, so lending each other hand is not a bad thing. Well, it's a good thing, actually. So I remember there was a day 
very early, like 5 a.m. in the morning, that I heard my, my dad footstep outside the living room. And I just came out and talked to him. And it was really emotional because I, I never talked to him before about like anything except like, oh, did you eat lunch or like, um, are you tired? How the job? And et cetera. We, we never share anything. And the fact that I have been living, living away from them for so long, it was just create a distance between us. So, and I told him, I remember that. I, I told him that I wasn't really feeling well, that I feel that I wasn't feeling I was good enough for anything, for anyone. I wasn't that smart. And um, I'm gay as well. So, and he, and he was like, oh, that's okay, you know, like, we really support you for who you are. So, you shouldn't feel that way, that you should be proud of yourself with what you have done. And I feel so much better after that. Like, it's the first time in my 26 years that I feel like the, sh the rock on my shoulder is actually <coughs> lift off. Well, it's not very dramatic, but it's just the bad decision that I think I, I ever made to like, talk to them. <laughs> right. Um, right. And also, I do believe in education, and I do believe in art and design can make a huge difference and make a huge impact on the social aspect, not just only on the commercial side, because we think about like property design, we think about like branding, we think about poster, banner, and anything. But actually, I really want to bring art to to create something that I can try to have an impact with, like to out there. Can I start, please? So that's when I decide to have a project um, hashtag. This is what anxiety feel like, mm -hmm. and we have a few different work here. You can come and have a look after we finish, maybe. <laughs> right. So, and also to realize that many people have been suffering from the same thing, I want to use all my skill to create one thing that can speak to other. So this is um, the overall very small exhibition that we have in LCD about three months ago. And it divides into like three different parts because I think anxiety is such a really big topic that we try to tickle each one of them and, and then and then the creative process is going on for like a few weeks before I actually start to do my very first draft of like design thing, things. Because um, what I realized after reading a lot about story available, like people sharing about their story and the anxiety and their depressions, what I realized is that um, the campaign of anxiety and depression is always so dark and really depressed. And people seem to like, still they don't understand. And and instead of like try to have those suffering from anxiety, people tend to think they're really dramatic, and and it's still because they don't really know what does it mean. So how will we be able to, to tell them like what exactly what anxiety means to them? So then I think maybe the first um, first thing first we need to get them to understand, and then to get them do a bit like check up on yourself actually. So I have like the board here is like. Have you ever experienced any other following symptoms on a regular basis? So everyone gets nervous or anxious when speaking in the public, for instance, and when go through the financial difficulty or occasionally is normal emotion. However, for some people, anxiety becomes so frequent, so thoughtful, and it begins to take over their life. And how can you tell if your everyday anxiety had crossed the line into a disorder because you can't see it doesn't mean the suffering isn't there. So we have a very simple symptom like self-doubt, sleep problem, disney, her populations. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's normal for if like once in a while you feel that way, but it's not normal if you feel like frequently as the result is very surprising me when people feel constantly feel self-doubt all the time and like perfectionism. Well, I do have self-doubt, but then perfectionism, may, maybe not. Like, um, I may ask the questions like, which one of you guys thinks that the most common that you think for the symptom? Mm -hmm. Have you ever really experienced self-doubt? Mm -hmm. like, like, maybe a few times a week or a few times a year? <laughs> a few times a day? A few times a day, <laughs> right, a few times a day. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, and then, for example, like, I chronic digestion, like, I didn't know that 
actually is a part of the symptom as well because I feel like after we're eating something we feel like oh, the stomach just can't really take it and you feel like maybe that's the because of the shitty food that you eat but actually maybe that's not really true so I mean but I'm a no professional so I can't tell you which one whether you have the symptom or not you just have to like do the fun checkup for yourself and maybe go to see professional or like checking for emotional support from families and friends if you have it. So just briefly um, talk about this because as I mentioned before, again, um, the topic, it was really difficult to understand actually. And language have a, like the border, the boundary between language is really difficult to understand either. So then um, I think transform them into like visual is can attract the mass audience actually and like make people understand more about this. Um, so this is one of my very first one that it actually is my favorite as well. Right, so um, we usually like, we spend like 20 or 30 minutes every morning to put our makeups on because we try to hide the very heavy eye bags that we just, you don't, you didn't have enough sleep. But then for anxiety and depression, you, you Sorry, you can't really see it. So I think maybe in alternative way that we, I just have to like draw my, my eye back like more visible so people tell like, oh, you know, like I'm very tired right now, like just don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, that stuff. Or like, yeah, so it was remind me a story of um, Robbie Williams, a very success, successful comedian. And he's such a positive person in, in, on TV, but then he died from depressions. Like, so then, I mean, because you can't see it doesn't mean the suffering isn't there. Or maybe, I don't know whether some of you know the death of the Korean singer just last month from the Korean band, that he'd been suffering from depression for many, many years, but then in front of like the people, in the front of like the public eyes, he was such a very positive person. Like, and the moment that he died, it was shocking because no, no one's gonna know that. And um, yeah. Uh, well, I think that one very classic for it, whether you're working in the creative industry, so like, and especially like freelancer, because clients just working all the time, like maybe 1 a.m. in the morning, that they, they don't think that's your weekends or like you have to sleep. And I have a massive fear with telephone rings and the doorbell. So <laughs> when I see that pop up on my screen, automatically I think oh, there's a lot of things, like, did I send the email or I must have something wrong or like how should I take the call because they just gonna maybe yell in my face that I did something wrong, did I send my five wrong? I remember last week I was sent one file to my client and actually it was like 500 boxes printed but in the wrong size. So yeah, so can we have the next one please? Yeah, or this one, like I mean you imagine you are a donut in, in the box like Everyone having a very nice outfit and you feel so exposed because you feel like you're not wearing enough makeup and you're not wearing enough like night clothes and it was just like but then you feel uncomfortable because you have to sitting next to very closely to like other people when they see like oh look at me I'm such a big fat potato why is everyone why is so nice and beautiful and skinny <coughs> right next one please <laughs> Or this one is me every day, 27, sweaty hands, sweaty palm. And then, yeah, <laughs> man, oh, because I like to do like crafting with like paper and stuff, but then when I touch the paper, it would just literally melt out in my hand. So, yeah, it was very scary. But I think it's, it's fun to transform like the idea into the visual language because you, you can like connect it very unexpected things to something that you never thought about it before. But then uh, when I do that series, it might be a little bit difficult for those who are not familiar with English language because we don't have such, such a the word in, in Vietnamese actually. So I'm just still trying to figure it out how I continue my, my series in Vietnamese in a more fun and interesting way that I did with that series. <laughs> right. So maybe we should move on to the very last and I let you guys um, see the picture after that. So this is the part. Right, the next slide please. Next slide. Yeah, 
but it is, might be a bit difficult to say, to, to see here actually. But then again, right. So I mean, um, for people with anxiety and depression, what they need the most is a support from families and, and friends. And whether it's emotional support or <coughs> the road to begin for checking professional help, but then there's, there's certain things that you shouldn't say to them. Because often, when you hear a story repeat again and again, you feel the per you told the person lie, just get over it yourself, and you are so dramatic. It just happened all in your head, it's nothing matter. But actually, it will just make it worse because we don't feel supportive, and the symptom it just start getting worse, and they hiding themselves into the shelf, and they don't want to share anything. And I mean, so instead of saying something like that, say something nice. Mm -hmm. Say something like, I may not understand, but I'm willing to listen. And that actually means a lot. So for the very last part of the exhibition that I, I just hung in on the board, and have like set a postcard for someone, for everyone to come in to like write down some note for someone that they know who suffering, who having a hard time, to like actually lift up a little bit their spirit. Because what I think is like, well, it might be solve the problem. It might not be not solve the problem, but it surely is can bring some a bit like joy to life and like a bit hope for someone that who are having a hard time right now. And I think that that's way more important that you understand because again, anxiety is not something that you can explain in words simply. And you need time, you need to absorb and understand the, the person. And you might not understand, that's okay. But if you listen, and that's mean a lot. So, I mean, in the end, what I have learned from my experience is that, oh, sorry, <laughs> right, and what I have learned from my experience is that um, I was lucky enough to have such amazing families and friends to help me always be there for me, and there is a certain people that I haven't met for years, that I haven't really spoken for years, but a distance is mean nothing for true friendships. And we are not alone in this world, and we are all human beings, so sometimes we do need help. And, and I mean, whether it's emotional support or professional help, just don't be ashamed of it, because it's totally safe that I am not okay today, and it's totally okay for shaking for help. And um, it's, it's kind of like, I'm quite thank thankful for my anxiety and my depression disorder because now I know that I am more capable of what I used to think and so do you. And I step out of my comfort zone and I do something that completely changed my perspective and um, I was really happy about the decision that I, have, that I made and it was my sound a bit cliche but it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable and to be sharing the story to others. And once you go past the storm, you never go back. And I think it was just the difficulty in life which just make us so much stronger and, and just do more difficult, diff different things that you might be like, I never think like I did such a project before, but I'm really happy with that. So yeah, thank you very much. I talk very fast, I know. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So uh, whether you have any questions um, on ears, that I'm very happy to answer that. <laughs> I'll ask a question. Yeah, please. Um, so you mentioned you, you mentioned that. you mentioned that it wasn't until you were 26 that you came out to your parents and that you even uh, like uh, decided to approach them. I wonder if you could speak to that a little bit because I imagine, and I'm not sure, but I imagine in Vietnamese culture it's even more anxiety ridden to, to open up to your parents in that way? And maybe, um, like, did you wish that you had done it sooner? Did, were, you, were you happy with the way your parents reacted? And, and would you advise young people to come to their parents sooner? Right. All right, thank you for your question. What was your name? Faith. Faith, Faith. yeah, thank you, Faith. Right, um, speaking about that story, it was kind of unexpected as well because I think but um, well, I, I think everything has happened for a reason. Like if I don't really have that anxiety for many for so long, I didn't really have the courage to to actually approach them in, in the way that I talk to them because it was yes, in Vietnamese culture it was difficult. And I think in general, like in every culture it's difficult, but then 
for me that I grew up in a conservative family, that we have the big family with relative and everything that is almost like everything that you do, everyone knows in, in the family knows. So it's kind of like saving face for the family and we support to like get out of the college, have a stable job and get married, have a husband and have a children and, and stuff like that. But then for me that I know that I don't want to go to that part, but then I didn't really have the courage to like I have been in love with the same person for four years now. And then, but I never thought that one day that I, I can live my own life. Like, it was just the scare of like hiding and like try to, to be the best self myself that I can because what I used to think is that I need to have a lot of achievement at work, I need to have my careers, I need to move out to be able to live the life that I want with the person I love. But then, um, but then I, yeah, so I didn't really expect them to react that way. Well, I mean, they still still get getting used to it because it was it was tough for me and it was tough for them as well. So I can't really ask them to accept right away. But I mean, it was the very good first start to like let them know and and know that they love you for who you are, even though it might be difficult. And while I don't really have like advice to come sooner or later because the timing on different people is. It really depends on say traditions and the lives. So, I mean, um, you know when you know. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question too. Yeah. What, are, when, what was the response from the um, audience? What kind of feedback? Um, what did you learn from having the project? Right. Well, it, it was. Thank you, Michelle. It was very interesting question as well, because um, my topic is not very familiar with, with the public um, because um, what I realized is that um, mental health issue in general is still very underestimated and we don't really talk about it and, and we often, so the road of fighting like the clinic or like taking pills and everything, well like treatment, it was difficult as well. So when I display the work within exhibition, like people got really attracted to, to the board because it's very simple that you can't really understand it. But then when it comes to the illustrations or the message, um, you know, <laughs> they don't really understand what I'm trying to say because again, the audience, the mass audience is in Vietnamese. And uh, we are not familiar with, with that topic and we don't talk about it that often. So they don't really understand why I, I try to to do a campaign, such a campaign like that, why my other classmates do something of, like about like traditional cultures or um, about something very uh, trendy, may maybe, and that's grab the attention a little bit more than my social awareness campaign, actually. <laughs> but then for the people who understand that, they got a really positive message for me, so I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, please. Have you had all of your work translated into Vietnamese? Oh, and goodness. what do you intend to do with this really wonderful creative expression? How are you going to get the message out there and use it to maybe help some other people? Great. I think you watch your name again. Oh, so Ruthie. Ruthie, right. Uh, thank you, Ruthie. Thank you for your questions. Well, I haven't, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Like um, my my first language is Vietnamese, of course, but then it's sometimes I feel is is way easier to like to speak in English sometimes because it's it's more straightforward into especially for that topic. Mm -hmm. So I really haven't uh, I haven't really translated into Vietnamese. But then um, when I speak to a few of my friends or the the other people, and I feel like a lot of people having suffering from the same thing. And there's a website, in, uh, it's written in Vietnamese, and it's run by, um, I couldn't remember who is it, but then there was Bay in Singapore, but they have the website called beautifulmind.vn. And I actually go to the website and I read all the article. It was really good because it's not like professional register or anything, but it was more like a blog when people come and share their own story and they have like little tips or like the little address for people looking for treatments or like just find a place to talk. So I think maybe in the future, if I can, surely I will try to like connect to them because I already know a few people maybe. Um, and I think it's just the great opportunity for me to be here at first I can share with other 20 people after I have done it on the late um, October. So yeah, and I just photograph them and I like, put them on my portfolio because I really love to do like social campaigns. 
So maybe that's one of the way that I can do a little to help the other people. <laughs> right. Yeah, please. Do you mind? Um, I was just wondering, what was the audience for your exhibition mainly? Was it mostly young people or was it a um, slightly older audience? So I was curious if it might be quite popular with teenagers, early 20s. Right. Um, thanks. Okay. Um, thanks. Thanks. Right, thanks, Beck. Well, um, that's actually as a project as I do for my very final years at LCDF College. So the majority of the audience that I tried to approach, it was like agency people, like creatively, um, people and like very young as well actually but then because they come to see the exhibitions as my 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 work is not like a social campaign so actually there's not really tackle on the audience that I that I wanted actually yeah but I think um, anxiety can can happen to anyone but I think yes it's more important for young people to acknowledge it <laughs> and to understand themselves because, I mean, growing up, we've, we often feel like we, we wasn't good enough for anything, so I think it's important to make them feel comfortable with their skin and to make them growing up feel way more comfortable about themselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure, please. Um, you said you've obviously spent some time in Australia and your campaign is in English, and it's certainly a topic that's spoke of quite readily in Australia now. Um, there's a big movement to give time and attention to mental health and mental wellbeing. Have you got plans to maybe take your exhibition and share it in the Australian environment? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, um, such a big question. I mean, I would love to. I, I haven't really been back since, since then. But yeah, because um, I remember when I lived in Australia, I lived next to Beyond uh, Beyond Blue. Yeah, it was just next to my door, but I didn't know what, what did they do. So, and then just recently I found out there was really big mm -hmm. and well-known um, organizations for like, anxiety disorder and depression, so they help people. So that's one of my very first research as well. Well, I mean, I would love to if I, I, I could. I mean, like, it was <laughs> difficult because, I don't know, but I mean, I would love to. And I know you are right that I think anxiety and depressions and mental health being right now is it just slowly but it's become more unpopular because we live in very stressful life right now and the social life is just making going mad so i think it's important that you're taking care of yourself physically and mentally